We are continuing to get to know the coaching staff, and right now we have got defensive coordinator Phil Snow. Coach, thank you for taking the time to do this with me. You bet. So you bring so much experience uh, to this role, and I was just wondering, what was your first football job? Well, I actually was uh, started coaching football at a high school, at Berkeley High School. Gosh, what year? It was in the mid-'70s. So it's been – and Berkeley High School is in California, so Berkeley, California. So it's been a long time ago. Beautiful place. I've been to Berkeley. It's absolutely beautiful there. Yeah. What about that – made you want to stick with it? What do you take away from, from your time starting out somewhere like that? Well, you know, my mother told me, I, she, she's always told me that, that I wanted to be a coach when I was 10 years old. I told her that's what I was going to be. So, you know, I started coaching, even when I was in high school playing sports, I coached uh, like my brother's seventh grade basketball team at six in the morning while I was playing basketball in high school. I coached baseball in the summers. I was always coaching something, even as a teenager. So, it's just something I've wanted to do. So when I started at Berkeley High, I knew that was going to be what I was going to do. Um, how far I advanced and all that, you know, you never know. Uh, but I got some great advice. Um, my first coach at Berkeley High told me, do not take another job until you're at the level that you want to be at. Um, don't take a high school job or get married until you're at the level you want to be at. So I kind of used that. And um, I, I eventually got into the Pac-10. And so I got, I got married. So uh, <laughs> I, I waited. That's some good advice right there. So, yeah. gosh, you were coaching your brother's basketball team at seven in the morning when he was in middle school and you were in high school. That's some serious dedication. I was just, have you ever had a non-football job? Like when you were younger, did you ever work in a restaurant or anything like that? Or has it always been football? No, well, I grew up on a uh, on a ranch, and my dad had a construction business. So I was either working out in the fields, or I was work help building homes and pouring concrete and all that. So I always had a job, um, as long as I can remember. What's it like growing up on a ranch? It's pretty cool. Uh, right. You know, the only problem with that is when your dad. We live on a ranch. I have to do all the ranch work and then do the construction work. So I was, I was busy all, all the time, unfortunately. So, yeah. So by the time you get to, to the level of college or the NFL, the long hours are nothing to you because you've been doing it since you were a kid. Yeah. You know, it's just, uh, my dad worked a lot of hours. So, you know, uh, I think a lot of people, a lot of professions that are successful work a lot of hours. So it's just not football. And you gotta, you gotta love it. You gotta love it. Uh, so let's talk about 2001. That's when you said you met Matt Rule. He was a grad assistant when you were the defensive coordinator at UCLA. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so what happened was um, we needed a graduate assistant and this guy kept bugging the heck out of me. I didn't have any idea. And he kept sending me stuff. So I asked our head coach if he knew Joe Paterno at Penn State because Matt played at Penn State. And he said, yeah, I, do. I know him real well. So he called and talked to him and Joe, Coach Paterno said, hire him. So we did. And and it was a great hire. He did a great job for us. He only he was only with us one year, and then he went to uh, uh, Western Carolina as a linebacker coach. What, what was he sending you? He was sending you like his thoughts on plays, or you should be doing this. No, he was bugging me about he wanted the job, so he'd send me uh, stuff in the mail. He would uh, call me. He was he just bugged the hell out of me. So I thought this guy's got something to him. So uh, we found out who he was, and and none of us knew him when he came. Nobody knew Matt, so he did. So he fit right in, and he he did a great job. And what a what a great relationship that's been uh, for you and him, and and a lot of the staff. You've been through a lot. Uh, what was your reaction when he called you about this position? Yeah, uh, the Carolina job. Yeah. Well, we kind of been together. So I, I I went to work for him at Temple, and then we went to to Baylor, and he's been saying he said Snow, we're going to go to the pros. I said all right. Um, so, you know, I knew he was going to leave. It was time for him to leave. If he was going to leave at his age and what he'd accomplished in college and he wanted to do the pro uh, deal, so he, he needed to leave when he did. So it was a great opportunity for all of us. Absolutely. All right, so we've, we've covered a lot of uh, football stuff and, and all the long hours that, that you commit to that. Do you, what do you do to unwind? Do you have any non-football hobbies or, or interests or TV shows? 
that you like? Well, you know, uh, I don't watch much TV, but my wife and I like to play golf together. So when we have a chance, that's what we do. And so, uh, you know, you know, it's not only hard. You know, when you work a lot of hours, it's it's just not yourself that's involved in that. It's your spouse and family. And so um, when we can, when I can, I spend as much time, and I think most coaches do with their family. And your son played uh, golf in college as well, correct? Yes, yes, he did. Who's the best golfer in the family? Well, he is. I'm, I'm the worst male golfer. My dad at eighty nine beats me. So, <laughs> so anyway. Speaking of um, athletic family members, I grew up a Red Sox fan. Uh, my dad is from Massachusetts, and I read that your nephew is Red Sox star legend Dustin Pedroia. Is that is that right? Yeah, uh, he's my sister's boy, old, or young, actually youngest boy. Yep. And how, I mean, did you get to see him play at all a fair amount? Obviously, you've been so busy yourself. Did you ever get to go to Boston and watch him play? Well, you know, um, so when I was at Arizona State, I was there nine years. You know, you know, we'd send him all our Arizona State gear, and he, so he grew up in there. So he actually went to Arizona State and played baseball. So then he went into the, you know, got drafted by the Red Sox. And so, yeah, we, we've been to a number of his games. And, and really, um, you know, he hadn't played in a year and a half because of injury. And, and I really missed the fact that he hadn't played. You know, last year, obviously, you know, with the pandemic, we haven't played this year. But, um, you know, I really miss watching him play. He's, you know, whether you know Dustin or not, he's fun to watch. Uh, he's diving on the ground. He's dirty all the time. And so – um, he is, he's fun to watch. He's not very big and his mother is not very big. So he's really fun to watch. He's a hard worker, which seems to be a trait in your family. Yeah. <laughs> he's a, you know, we have, we've had a lot of, uh, nieces and nephews and cousins play college sports and a lot of different sports. So it's been kind of fun to watch. So when you all get together, if you ever do a family reunion or a holiday, is everyone talking sports or do you try to just stay away from that? Or it's like you can't, you know, everyone's talking sports at the table, the game's on in the background, all that. Well, we really don't talk sports. We play them. So there's, there's a ping pong game going on. There's a pool table. There's what we're doing. <laughs> we're always competing against each other. So um, it's so embarrassing for me. I don't even play ping pong with them anymore. You're too competitive to, to play and lose, huh? Well, yeah, I, I lose. Even my sister that 66 beats me, so <laughs> I quit playing that too. I tell you what, I want to go to a family gathering uh, with your family. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, they are a lot of fun. Well, Coach, thank you for, for taking the time to let us get to know you a little bit better. This was a blast. I really appreciate it. Yep, thank you, Christian.